We present a 19-year-old patient with an idiopathic urethral stricture. He never consulted his doctor and presented to the emergency room with acute urinary tension which was managed with a suprapubic bladder catheter. Cystourethrograms show a 2 cm long deep bulbar urethral stricture. Stricture excision in end-to-end -end anastomosis is the surgical technique of choice in these cases and offers 95% of optimal results. Patient position is of utmost importance. The exaggerated lithotomy position exposes perfectly the perineum and allows the dissection of the deep proximal bulbar urethra. The midline perineal incision should not be too long in order to allow the turnerworic perineal ring retractor to self-retain in position. After dividing the bulbocarvernosus muscle, the bulbar urethra is exposed. The bulbar urethra has to be mobilized as far proximally as possible to later allow a tension free spatulated anastomosis. Slight urethral traction with the loop facilitates the urethral mobilization in the midline where the spongiosum and corpora cavernosa are adherent and sharp dissection is required to separate them. The proximal dissection usually requires division of the posterior midline attachments of the bulbar urethra to the central tendon of the perineum. Care should be taken during this dissection to preserve the bulbar arteries which enter the deep bulb posteriorly. Suture ligation of these arteries are sometimes mandatory if the stricture is located near the membranous urethra. Patients do not lose cavernous erection although glans tumescence is often poor during the first months of the surgery. After adequate proximal mobilization, the stricture is localized by means of a Benique sound and divided perpendicularly at this point. We can perfectly see the limited urethral caliber at the stricture side. The stricture should be incised longitudinally and the incision carried distally through the stricture until normal urethra is identified. Thereafter, the strictured urethra should be excised to perform the anastomosis with spongiofibrosis free tissue. A 30 French bougie or 60 Benique sound is then passed to confirm that the entire stricture has been incised. The sound should pass easily in healthy urethra. While preparing the proximal urethral stamp, we can leave a boulder clamp on the distal urethral end to avoid back bleeding. The proximal urethral stump is prepared in the same fashion as the distal one. Spatulation should be performed on the dorsal side and all the urethral scar and spongiofibrosis should be excised. After placing the first stitch in the midline on the dorsal aspect, we again verify the excellent caliber of the urethra. Before proceeding with the anastomosis, we see that the distal urethra reaches the proximal urethral stump with tension. In order to achieve a tension-free anastomosis, the distal bulbar urethra is mobilized to the penile scrotal junction. Traction of corpora cavernosa with an Alice or Babcock clamp facilitate the dissection. Any attempt to gain additional urethral length by mobilization of the penile urethra risks a curvature cordy of the penile shaft. After appropriate urethral mobilization, both urethral ends overlap without tension.
when the urethral ends are mobilized so that an overlapping spatulated anastomosis can be performed without tension, the anastomosis is begun in the midline on the dorsal aspect with sutures incorporating mucosa and spongiosum. After the dorsal wall of the circumference is complete, an 18 French Foley catheter is passed and guided into the bladder. The anastomosis is then continued around the urethral circumference with interrupted 4O vicarious sutures that include both mucosa and spongiosum. 8 to 10 sutures are usually placed to complete the anastomosis. Sometimes it is necessary to excise bulbar spongy tissue to allow a more homogeneous anastomosis. The last stitches are tagged to improve the visibility of the mucosa, which is mandatory to include in the suture. Once the anastomosis is finished, we secure the urethra to the corpora cavernosa with two to four further stitches. After hemostasis is complete, we leave a small periurethral suction drain and close the bulbospongiosus muscle over the bulbourethra. Postoperatively, the patient can start mobilization at the first day and urethrographies are performed at 10 days. Postoperative urethrographies show a perfect anastomosis without contrast extravasation and with an homogeneous caliber.